Hi, my name is Carmen, and I am an early childhood special education teacher, a life and ADHD coach, and I'm the host of this podcast, Authentically ADHD. I created this podcast to help anyone wondering if they have ADHD, people who have been diagnosed for a while and want some more support and community. I'm here to bring you the latest research on ADHD and neurodiversities while we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of ADHD. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, ADHD here. Are you looking for more support with your brain? Do you crave community with people who understand you? You should really check out Focused, the group coaching program I am a part of that is for adults with ADHD. It's made and run by none other than Kristen Carter of the I Have ADHD podcast. I've grown so much by being in this program, using the tools, and being in the community for over a year now. If you use the link in my show notes, we both save money on this or next month's um, cost, so I think it's worth it. Go check it out at IHaveADHD.com slash focused. Hi there, and welcome back to Authentically ADHD with me, Carmen. How are you? I cannot believe how time is flying by. I can't believe it's almost spring again and that I'm still doing this podcast. We're going on almost three years. I feel pretty proud about that. And I mean, how much I've grown in that amount of time. I mean, it's just astounding to me. So I have a question. How do you feel about time? Are you able to manage your mind within the concept of time? Do you feel as if you never have enough time? Do you struggle with structuring your time in a day and then sticking to that plan? When you're bored, does time seem to like really slow down? Do you often run late and or feel like you are always rushing? Well, you have come to the right place, my friend, because today's topic is time, why it's hard, accepting that it's hard, and working with our brains instead of against them. Are you ready? Let's get started. So I want to start by asking you a question. What comes up for you when I say that we are going to talk about time management and the management of ourselves within time? You may feel shame. You may feel guilt and or disappointment. You may feel confident in your abilities and you may also not feel like you're able to label the emotion that you're feeling. ADHD is a spectrum. We all experience each symptom on a spectrum, so to varying degrees. And so some of us struggle with everything and all the things that have to do with ADHD all of the time. Others only struggle with some things some of the time and everywhere in between. That's what a spectrum is. It's, it's a bunch of different dots of, you know, ways that we struggle and then the levels of which, in which we struggle, they all vary. I struggle with time management a lot. I mean, I used to struggle with it a ton. I'm getting better, but I don't struggle as much with cognitive flexibility. Like I've said, when you've met one person with ADHD, you've only met one person with ADHD. You're only seeing one way that it can be presented. Okay, so let's kind of start on a positive note, shall we? What are you good at when it comes to managing yourself within time? 
Side note, if you are like me and you like to write these things out or you like to have the questions like in front of you that I'm going to be asking, there is a freebie follow along in the show notes. So make sure you pause and go grab that if you would like it. So list out some things you do that you feel that you do well in managing yourself within time. I want you to notice how I'm saying things like managing yourself within time instead of time management. This is because time cannot be managed. You cannot manipulate it. You cannot change it. Um, It is a construct that we have to manage ourselves within, okay? Time is a concept. I mean, you can see it on a clock, but like you can't physically make it, see it, touch it, manipulate it. You can only, we can only do those things with ourselves. So we can learn to manage ourselves within time. (sighs) ADHD brains have a really hard time understanding this because our brains never developed that feeling of time passing internally. Um, like I just sat down and wrote out a bunch of different things and I was, you know, I was hyper-focused into what I was doing and it didn't feel like an hour went by, but it was a whole hour. It felt like five minutes to me. So this is still deficient in my brain. Okay. We never developed that. We also didn't fully develop the ability to prioritize, organize, plan, and regulate our emotions while doing those things. Let me ask you, what do you struggle with when it comes to managing yourself within time? If this answer seems long or makes you feel some type of way, I wanna remind you that self-improvement happens slowly. The fact that you're working on yourself is what really matters, okay? We cannot grow through shame, so knock it off, all right? All right. So why is this so incredibly difficult for people with ADHD? Why do we run late, overfill our plates, commit to a thousand things we know we don't have the time for, and eventually just crash and burn? The reason why it's so difficult is because ADHD, the ADHD brain is built and developed so much different, so much more differently than the neurotypical brain. We have impaired executive functions. You know, up in the front part of our brain, I've talked about this before, it lowers our dopamine and norepinephrine and all of the different chemicals that we need for these executive functioning skills. We are deficient in them. And we are attempting to manage ourselves within time while using these executive functions And I want you to think about this. Time management requires pretty much every executive function there is. And I'm going to go more into this right now because this will help you understand why it's so incredibly hard for us as ADHDers to manage ourselves within time. I'm going to go over Um, six of the different executive functions and explain why within each it makes it so hard to manage ourselves within time to make a plan and stick to it. Speaking of extra supports, I just wanted to tell you all that I've updated my Patreon page to include all of the resources that I've really ever made to be held in one place. Just head to my show notes. Um, The VIP members do get a little extra, um, but you can also purchase 
like my brand new ultimate ADHD journal and planner, which I've been using for the past year that has worked. Um, nothing is priced over $10 and everything is at least 50 to 100 pages that you can download and print. You can get it to bind it and sent to you, or you can just read it off your screen and use notebook paper. So if you want or need any type of that kind of extra support, just head to my show notes and click the Patreon link to join. I hope to see you in there. So why is it so difficult for us to manage our time? Well, time management requires one, verbal working memory. This is our internal monologue. It helps us, you know, stay on task. Um, It's something that in the neurotypical brain, it tells them, you know, this is what you need to be doing. Don't forget that thing on that chair. Now, the person or the voice that is supposed to be in our ADHD brains usually has gotten distracted and walked away. This is why we get distracted and follow their urge to task switch and not follow our schedule, especially if it's filled with things we don't like to do. (laughs) The next one is nonverbal working memory. This is the part of the brain that allows us to feel that passing of time internally. Okay, so that's the reason why we can't feel the passage of time. We have to externalize that. That is not something we can improve. I use a time timer for that, which is a visual clock that shows me the amount of time that's passing so that I can see it. Because also, this is the part of our brain that helps us visualize what we want to do and how to get there, what the steps are and how long it might take. We're so deficient in this area, it's hard to visualize a finished task, let alone the steps to get there. Usually I have to write that all out, which is what I call externalizing my brain. So the next one that time management requires is emotional regulation. Why? Because our emotions fuel our actions. (laughs) So if we are dysregulated, planning and follow through are going to be extremely hard, pretty much almost impossible. We need to be regulated when managing ourselves within time. And it's really difficult to regulate when you don't even know where to start or you're already running late. Okay. You're already going to be feeling shame, disappointment, um, rushed and all the different things Uh, when you're in the midst of it. So being able to regulate yourself within the construct of your schedule is super important. If I were to suggest something to work on first, if you have a hard time with regulating your emotions around um, even just saying no to somebody because you can't fit that thing into your schedule, I would suggest you work on that first because really our emotions do drive our actions. The next um, little cluster of things is organization, planning, and problem solving. Neurotypical people develop these skills naturally and they are able to take a list of tasks and their brains just naturally put them in order by importance. That's called prioritization, and in the ADHD brain, prioritization looks like the tasks all sitting on the same level, and they are all, they are either all super important, or none of them are important. We are deficient in the skill of organizing our tasks and putting them into priority order. We have to use a lot more brain power and and think very intentionally about our tasks in order to do that and about the amount of time that we have in reality. Because we are also deficient in solving any problems that may come up during that planning or the execution of that plan. Like 
anything that has to do with life. I talked about capacity in a couple episodes ago. And if you're constantly trying to live with that container absolutely full, you're not leaving any time to problem solve life. Stuff that just comes up, like getting sick, running behind, losing something, something that's bound to happen that is just life. Okay, so as I continue here, I know it's rough and it's hard, but just to stick with me because the next one is impulsivity, okay? And I, oh, if I could be the queen of impulsivity, I would be. We lack the ability to resist the urge to switch tasks or in other words, delay short-term pleasure in order to get to the long term term reward. We lack that pause to think before doing, speaking, or even stopping. Impulsivity is a huge issue with motivation, with time management, because we can't help but to follow our urges at times. Our inhibition is dysregulated. Our inhibition is underdeveloped. So being able to have that pause that neurotypicals have before they do something, we don't have that. All right. The next one is self-motivation. Our brain chemicals do not work in a way that supports doing a non-preferred task. We have interest-based nervous systems that lack the get-up-and-go chemical to help us along when we're doing tasks that don't interest us, that we find boring or tedious or mundane, and we have to kind of create that within ourselves. I've learned that some of it can come from medication, but a lot of it for me comes from like gamifying tasks or, you know, making it a deadline for it or just different ways. I've actually found a ton of new ways in um, Danny Donovan's The Anti-Planner. I would totally look that up if I were you. It's definitely worth the money. I digress because the last one we need to look at is self-awareness. We are very deficient in our ability to be aware of what we're doing. It's super difficult for ADHD brains to be self-aware, so we don't see or recognize the predictable patterns that happen over and over, so we keep making the same mistakes over and over again. We lack the skills of self-reflection in order to evaluate what we are doing or what we did and adjust our behaviors accordingly. We just keep going around the hamster wheel, okay? (laughs) A lot of the time, as ADHDers, we live in fantasy. Why? Because reality sucks and our brains would rather live in fantasy, but that won't help us here. What will help is accepting and knowing that these skills are truly harder for you than your neurotypical peers. This is harder for you than it is for your significant other, your coworkers, your boss, your whoever. Now, we aren't going to just say, oh, okay, I'm just bad at it, so I can't change, so I'm not even going to try. Because you can. That's, that's why you're here. Is it easy? No, it's freaking hard, but we can do hard things. So what do you feel like you struggle with the most after I listed those those out? Because for me, I learned that I struggled quite a bit with all of them. I also learned that working past my capacity, people pleasing, and working with no constraint made it impossible to manage myself within time. Are you a person who has constraint or do you overfill your plate by saying yes to everyone, putting an unrealistic amount of to-dos on your list and or then committing to just way too much and completely burning out? 
I wrote a whole episode about constraint because it's so important in the ADHD brain. Do less things with better quality rather than doing a million things at low quality. I'm going to say that again because I feel like it was a mic drop. Do less things with better quality rather than doing a million things at low quality. When I learned about this, I decided to choose kind of just one executive function at a time to kind of work on or gain some tools, skills, see what worked. I improved my self-talk around time and managing myself within time. I don't shame myself for procrastinating anymore. I use externalized tools to assist my working memory. I use breath work and movement to regulate my emotions. And I gamify tasks to get my get up and go going. I am still working on my inhibition, my self-awareness and prioritization. And I might be working on those for the rest of my life. There is no quick fix. Ask me how I know. You can download all the productivity apps there are, but until you address your deficient executive functions, accept truly that it's hard and uncomfortable and start living in reality, none of it will work. No trip, no tip, trick, or hack will work for you, okay? Because you first have to accept the truth and live in reality. Because most of the plans that we make as ADHDers are unrealistic. They exist in fantasy. We truly believe that we can get so much done in a period of time than we actually can. And we underestimate how much time things are actually going to take. The solution I found to this is accepting that making those plans gave me dopamine. It made me feel so good to look at that list of stuff that I was about to just cross off everything one by one. That's the fantasy. And that, oh, that is something I had to really choose. Where what was actually important versus, in reality, what I needed to do. Now, in reality, you're going to need to grieve that fantasy. Listen up. You're going to be sad because there is true loss when we release that fantasy because it kept us safe, okay, for a long time. This makes sense. Give yourself time to grieve. Now, there are there days where we are, you know, that hyper-focus rolls on through and we get more done in a day than a neurotypical person can do in a whole week? Yes. But in reality, this only happens once in a while. I realized I was planning for that version of me, that hyperproductive, motivated me that only showed up once in a while, all the time. Do you resonate with this? It's another thing our brains do. It's like we do it one day and our brains are like, oh, you can do this much in one day. And now we are expecting ourselves to do that much in one day all the time. The truth is that one of the hardest parts of time management, or should I say another one of the hardest parts, is those uncomfortable emotions that come up when we have to say no, when we have to give up an idea we don't have time for but we really want to do, and literally living in reality. It sucks. Reality bites. (laughs) And I was so used to living in fantasy that I was taken aback by reality. It was incredibly uncomfortable. So I had to tolerate that uncomfortable emotion. Managing yourself within time is going to take emotional regulation and tolerance for those really, really uncomfortable, yucky emotions. So what can we do? After accepting yourself for who you are, Start to live in reality. That's the first step. Figure out how long your tasks actually take. Figure out what tasks of yours are actually must-do tasks that you need to do for you or that you need to do for your boss. 
Okay, like make it simple. Pick one way to plan your day and then practice. It's like learning any other skill. It takes practice. It also takes self-awareness, self-evaluation of what worked, of what didn't work, and how you can adjust the plans for what didn't work and try differently. And then while you're doing this, talking to yourself with kindness and compassion is the key to real growth and change. Saying things like, it makes sense that this is hard. My brain is wired differently. It's okay. We can try again. It's okay that this didn't work. I can try something differently. Those types of self-talk statements promote growth. Negative self-talk, beating ourselves up and shaming ourselves, stunts that growth. Talk to yourself like you'd talk to your best friend, your child, or someone else you love. I promise you that with practice, knowledge, and self-compassion, you can improve in this area. I promise. I've done it. And I, I really believe that you can do it too. I'd love to hear your takeaways. If you're interested in more support, head to the show notes for a free consult coaching call or sign up for the Patreon where I am building a community for people whose brains work differently and I'd love to welcome you in. That's all I have for now. Stay authentic, my friends, and we will talk soon.